Hey, soldering is one of those fundamental things that you need to learn to do most of the stuff we do here on DIY Engineering. Uh, today we're going to step back, learn the basics of soldering, and then we're going to apply those to build a voice modulation circuit just in time for Halloween. So in the last video, we found this mask in the studio. Now I offered it up to anybody that subscribed and commented on the video, but nobody commented on the video. Freaking idiot. <sighs> so we're gonna up the ante. This week we got a Velum and Voice Changer kit. I bought this online and it's got about 50 components and we'll need to solder that up. So before we do that, let's talk about soldering real quick. So before we start soldering this project, I want to take a few minutes to talk about the soldering iron and tools that I use and maybe help you out. For most people, this may be a slam dunk, but if you haven't soldered a lot and you're diving into a more complex project, then I'll at least show you the tools, how I use them, to give you a general idea. So the soldering iron I use is a West D51 made by Weller digital soldering iron. So this is a really nice soldering iron because it has a dial on the front of it. It allows you to go from 350 to 850 degrees Fahrenheit, which gives you very fine control. Generally, for most solder, I run between six and seven hundred degrees and that works best um, and the nice thing about this is that it has replaceable tips which makes it easy if you damage one aside from the soldering iron it's important to keep your tip clean so the tip of the soldering iron is very important if you're soldering small components or small traces and you have to have the accuracy and the point to heat up that particular spot before applying solder in most cases you want to tin the tip of your soldering basically that just means that you're gonna etch off any oxidation and apply a thin coat of solder in order to etch it use something like a rosin paste. This is kind of a waxy acid that you apply and you just dip your soldering iron into it and then you would apply some solder directly onto it. So when you've got your tip prepared and it's been tinned properly you have a nice silver coat at the very tip and you won't have any black marks on it. I often use this brass mesh which, which is just like a Brillo pad in here and it allows you to scrape off any excess solder that you may accumulate on the tip so that you don't get any stray solder on your board. So you always want to keep your tip very clean and always make sure that it's tinned properly. Um, aside from that, um, the types of solder that you can use, there's silver solder, lead-free solder, rosin core solder, and the rosin core solder is what I use the most of and I think it's the most general purpose. It basically has some of this acid paste already in the core of the solder so that when I apply the solder to the surface or the pad that I'm soldering, it first etches the surface from the rosin core. You'll see a little bit of smoke come up and then the solder is obviously there and it'll melt and adhere to the pads very well because it etches off the oxidation on the metal prior to actually bonding. And solder really creates a metallurgical bond between the two surfaces that you're soldering. And in that regard, it requires the surfaces to be very clean for it to bond correctly. So using a rosin core solder something like a 60-40. It's usually 60% tin and 40% lead and they come in different variations. There's also silver solder if you don't want the rosin and you want to do that all manually. There's a possibility of doing cleaner solders. It's a little bit stronger and whatever works best for you. It may have better continuity in some applications. It's just a matter of preference. Now once you've got things soldered you may need to remove components at time. There's a couple different ways that, and tools that you can use to do that. One is to use a braided copper desoldering mesh. This is just a piece of braided copper and if you lay it on your circuit board and then you heat them both up, the solder will wick into this braided copper really easily. It just loves to soak right into it. And then you can reuse the same area multiple times and then you can just throw it away as you use it. This is good for like large accumulations of solder that you need to remove. If that doesn't work for you, and sometimes it's easier to use a solder sucker. And basically this is just a vacuum pump that you engage and then you have a trigger right here that once you heat up the solder, you hold this solder sucker down there, you hit the button and it'll suck up the molten solder into this chamber. Then occasionally you have to open this up and empty out the solder that's been sucked up in there. This works fairly well um, for large areas. If you need to clear out a through hole, get it all molten and hot, and then you can suck all the solder out of the hole so that you'd be able to see through and then place your components through it again. So solder sucker, desoldering braid, a couple different types of solder. You wanna be sure to use rosin or a uh, acid paste to clean off the oxidation on your surfaces. And then it's, as long as you have a good iron and you know the temperature, then you're able to get pretty consistent 
application of the solder. And that's really all it comes down to, is having good lighting, having good visibility. Um, you know, often I'll use these sort of things to get really close and personal with the circuit board out as you're soldering it. Some of the traces can be really small, and if you have a good soldering iron and a good tip, you can get in there and do really high quality soldered components. So just take your time, do it right, be clean and discreet about every connection that you're actually soldering, and, and you can't go wrong. It takes a little bit of practice, but it, it's not rocket science. The most important part is that you heat up the pad that the component needs to be soldered to first, and once that material is hot, then you apply the solder directly to the heated surface. The solder will melt and create a metallurgical bond between the two, and you have a nice shiny surface. If the surface of your solder isn't shiny, then it's likely that your temperature on your iron is too low. Usually I run on the high side, 720, 730, so that you can heat up your components. You don't want to go too much higher than that. Depending on what you're soldering, you may damage the component. Depending on how quickly you are soldering, you may want it a little bit hotter. Just depends on your preference. It'll take some practice, so get some spare circuit boards, create nice beads, and don't overuse the solder because it'll often lead to more problems than it helps. So that's it. It's not really rocket science. Get a good iron, get some solder, and a way to keep your soldering iron clean and practice. Now back to the project. So now that we're all experts at soldering, uh, let's talk about the Velum and Voice Changer. What we're gonna do is solder this kit up and place it inside the mask. That'll allow the mask to actually change our voice. This is a voice changing kit that can make you sound like a robot, can raise or lower your voice. Kind of like in those old movies, how they, you know. Exterminate! Exterminate! Basically that's all this does. We'll put it inside the mask. It'll make the mask a little bit cooler and maybe we'll get a comment on the video. Whoever comments on the video, you know, we'll pick a random user and send them the mask with the voice changer with a speaker like in a bow tie or something. All right, so let's put this thing together. So that wasn't too hard. There was a bunch of components, but we just went methodically through there. We had a good soldering iron and we were able to hit all those pretty easily. So this is the final component. We've got a speaker connected to it and you can probably hear my voice talking through this. It's lowering my voice and you have a few buttons on the front that allow you to change it. I can change it up into a high voice and that makes me sound a little bit weird. So we'll install this in the mask, and the mask will have a pretty cool effect of being able to change your voice. That's all. And then you wear this around your neck, and that's where the sound comes out. Now we just have to figure out a way how to mount this in the mask. Should be pretty straightforward. We, 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 we are F Society. Over the, over the years, we have been watching. Alright, so here's the mask with the voice changer built into it. We use some Velcro to connect it. If you want the mask, you need to subscribe and comment in the video. <laughs> Hey, so that's it. Um, hopefully you learned something about soldering or you'll hone in and perfect those skill sets. Um, and at the same time, we got to build the mask, which is kind of cool. And be sure to like and comment below uh, for a chance to win the mask with the voice modulation and the speaker and the bow tie, which is kind of cool. You know, it's just in time for Halloween, so that's a great thing. Give it to your kids or something. Anyway, stay safe, have fun, and I can't wait to see you next time.